Okay, should I use my home address? I mean, my home address sounds perfectly doable and okay. Or maybe I should go with a PO box. I mean, are they allowed? Can I even use those in legal documents? Or what about this whole virtual mailbox thing? I mean, those seem cool and it won't like invade my privacy from my home address. But then I heard about these virtual offices and I heard that in order to get business credit and some of my documents, I need to actually have a physical address. I mean, what is it? What should I do? I know it's confusing as hell. You know you need a business address in order to start, in order to grow, in order to register your business, but you don't know which kind is the best kind. And you don't want to keep rearranging things, nor do you want to spend an arm and a leg changing or doing it, and you damn sure don't want to ruin your chances of getting business credit. So do you want to know which business address and which type is the best business address for you? then watch today's episode because that is exactly what I am going to tell you. We're gonna walk through the different types of business address that exist and I'm gonna tell you exactly which one you should choose to start and grow your business. Let's get to work. C -P -C -P. All right, first things first, let's start with what the big five types of business addresses that most folks go with anyway. All right, so I wanna start there. The first type is your home address. And we all know what your home address is, right? Your home address is your house's address. It is your local residential address. And a lot of people tend to go directly into the home address space because their plan is to work from home. And I get it. I mean, that's kind of what makes logical sense. and it's the easiest address and it's one that you already own. So there's lots of different reasons why you want you your idea is to go with your home address. But I want to caution you against that home address and why I don't think it's a great idea. And I've said this before. Number one, when you use your home address as your official business address, your privacy is no longer private. Everyone who wants to find your business and see what your business does, or every time you have to actually put an address on something that's going out there in the public, your home address is going to become visible and be very public. The second reason why I don't like using your home address is because legally you may not be able to use your home address. Most people don't realize this, but a lot of cities and localities have ordinances against using residential addresses for commercial purposes. That just simply means they don't want the home values and the neighborhood and all that kind of stuff affected by having a lot of businesses being run out of their homes. And so sometimes you have to actually apply with your city government to even get authorization to use your home address as your business address. And if you live in an HOA, they may not allow it or your apartment complex or townhouse or your landlord may not allow it. Even if you own your home, again, your city or locality may not allow it. So legally, you could be getting yourself into some trouble by publicly listing your home address as your business address. Another reason why your home address isn't a great idea is because if you have your LLC formed, which you should, and if you don't, don't worry, I'm doing a video on that shortly as well because we're going to talk about why that's so important. But if you have your LLC formed, you form that LLC because you wanted liability protection. You wanted to very specifically separate your business from personal. But when you use your home address as your business address, you are really skirting that line and blurring that line between business and personal, and you really could be piercing the corporate veil. And when you pierce the corporate veil, in essence, you are removing the liability protection that your LLC is supposed to create for you in the first place. And that means if something goes wrong with your business and someone decides to come after you or sue you, they could potentially come after your personal assets, including your house, your car, your savings, your jewelry, your paintings, all of that stuff directly. So using your home address is really something that I would contemplate and think about very seriously. The second type of business address that people oftentimes use and go to is a P.O. box. And I get it. P.O. boxes are simple, they're easy, and they're well known, right? P.O. boxes are those little boxes that you actually rent from the post office. And they are usually purchased because you want to have some form of anonymity when it comes to, you know, having privacy around an address. So as a business, you could say, all right, my business address is a P.O. box. And I'm going to tell you right now that that's not a great idea. 
idea. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't use your mailing address as a PO box if for some reason you want to do that. I'm, I'm going to tell you that that's kind of stupid to pay for, too, because I got some other options that we're going to talk about here shortly. What a stupid question that is. But a lot of your legal documents that you have to register your business with, like your LLC and your tax ID and even your business bank account and all that kind of good stuff, they're not going to accept a generic P.O. box. So in essence, if you're paying for a P.O. box, you're really just paying for a place to collect your mail. You're not paying for a business address because you can't most of the time use your P.O. box as a business address. Now, the third type of address that people oftentimes use are newer. They've just really sprung up, I would say, probably over the last 10 to 15 years or so, and that is a virtual mailbox. So I think about the virtual mailbox as a marketing differential between the P.O. box because they're really the same thing, y'all. A virtual mailbox and a P.O. box is just kind of an extra outside virtual place that you can collect mail. You've got mail. The difference, however, is that the virtual mailbox also has these features where they will actually scan your mail and forward it to you and someone will actually physically send you your mail versus a P.O. box. You got to go to the post office nearest you and pick it up or wherever your P.O. box is. You got to actually pick the mail up. Well, the virtual mailbox, they will have scanning services. They may open up your mail and scan it and email it to you um, or they'll just put it all in one big envelope and forward it to you. And that, in a sense, gives you a place for your business mail to go as well. But they are not the greatest form of having an actual business address. And the biggest reason is, is because it doesn't truly give you a separate physical location or a physical presence. And a lot of the documents that you are going to create during your start your business process are going to require a physical location or a physical address. Now you might be thinking, well, yeah, my iPostal, you know, mailbox does have a physical address, but it really doesn't. It's a virtual mailbox. It is not the fourth type of address address that people really use. I'm sorry, the fifth type of address that people really use that I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But the fourth type of address that folks use is a brick and mortar leased location. And that is where my life has been for the last 25 years. I have always had kind of a brick and mortar lease location. I actually physically get up and go to my office. And I had that long time ago. As you guys know, I've been in business for a long time. And a part of the reason why I had it is because virtual stuff didn't really exist. They just started kind of popping up, like I said, in the last 10 to 15 years. So if I wanted like a legit physical presence in a legit office, um, I had to actually get a brick and mortar leased location. And one of the bad things about that is that it is a brick and mortar leased location. So it has a physical thing, but it's leased. And usually those commercial leases can be really, really long. I've had leases that were five years long, seven years long, 10 years long. And I have spent in any given year $60,000 on office space. So they really do create kind of high overhead and high operating costs. And there's all kinds of things that go along with it, but I've literally gone through the process and I still currently have kind of a brick and mortar physical lease location because it's just what I've always done. And I really love the separation of not having my office at home. Um, I've kind of trained my family that I don't really do work work at home. I do have kind of a home office, but I don't really do work at home. I physically get up, get dressed and go into the office because of the space that I need. And I also like the idea of being able to have meetings in an office space. So a brick and mortar lease location is a possibility. It does give you the physical location and allow you to have an address for paperwork and stuff like that. But it can be really, really long term and it can be extremely, extremely expensive and make you have a really high overhead unnecessarily. So think about that when you're thinking about this fourth type of business address. And then the fifth type of business address and the one that I think most people are trying to get when they get a virtual mailbox, but they don't actually realize it's different, is a virtual office address. Yes, a virtual office. And a virtual office is different because it actually gives you the best of both worlds. And I'm going to give you a little bit more of an example about what I mean, but it gives you a physical office location without the big brick and mortar leased type of deal. And it also gives you that remote worker virtual mailbox type of experience. So it's a place that can collect your mail and that you um, don't necessarily have to go to, but it is a true office space that has 
has physical offices and physical suites that you can go to and use for meeting space and meeting with people if you want to, you can actually go forward and get an, a real true office space with it as your business grows if you want to. And it gives you the physical presence that you need for a lot of your business paperwork and definitely need for business credit and business loans and to actually get business financing options. So with that being said, out of the five of these types that I just talked about, which one do I recommend? Why do I recommend it? And which tool or service do I recommend you use to find my recommendation? Well, I, my love, recommend the virtual office option. And here's why. All right. Number one, the virtual office option, like I said, gives you the best of both worlds. It is virtual, so it's perfect for a remote person. You can actually have an office address or an office space that's virtual. Um, you do not le need long, expensive leases and you don't necessarily have to go to a physical location every single day. They're not going to give you a long, expensive lease and all that kind of stuff. I'm talking, you know, definitely not expensive and, and no real leases per se. Um, you still will have a place for your mail to go and they can forward you your mail or you can actually physically go and pick it up. Um, it also provides a physical office address that is legit and actually has like a brick and mortar building. And it can also provide you with physical office space for you to use as well. So if you have to have a client meeting or you have to do a presentation for a big opportunity, you can actually go to your virtual office and use the conference room, use the presentation facilities if you need to. You don't have to meet someone in Starbucks and Panera. And one of the things I love about the newest virtual virtual office is specifically the service that I'm recommending is that they have global networks of these offices. So if you need to travel for business like I do from some, for some instances, then you can actually find a office there that if you're a member of the service, you can use that office space while you're away. So y'all know how awesome that is for my mind because I've already told you when my son graduates, I'm going to be traveling, 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 but I will also be working, working, working and doing Doing business, business, business. And I want to be able to make sure that if I am doing business and I am traveling at the same time, that I can mix my business with my pleasure and I can work hard and play hard and have some office space to meet with some of those clients. So before I walk you through my best and most recommended tool and service that you should use to find the best virtual office space, I have got to let you know that I realized something. Um, and I've been getting tons of questions from you guys over the years as it relates to the specifically setting up the structure, all this stuff that we're talking about right now. You have indicated to me that it is difficult to figure out what your steps should be and in what order you should actually be setting up the structure of your business. I mean, I know that you know you got to get your LLC and you got to get your tax ID and you got to get a domain, you got to get email and phones and addresses, but you don't know which order to do them in and you don't know how to get all of those things so that you can do it quickly and easily without wasting money and without starting over time and time again. And after hearing that for the last few years, I decided to create a free training for all of you to learn just that. So I'm working on that free training right now. It is actually scheduled to be live when this video is going live, but I don't know for sure if it will be. Um, so if it is live, you will see the link in the description below or in the comments as well. If you do not see the link to the free training, then comment startup for me right down below this comment startup and I will send you and reply with a direct link to that training when it is all set and ready to go. All right. So even if you don't see the link, just comment startup and I will make sure that I reply directly to you with a link if that training sounds like something that you want to do. So make sure that you check it out down in the description and in the comments and make sure that while you're down there, you like and subscribe and you share. If you have found what we have talked about so far valuable at all, just give me that like. It's not going to kill you. And I only want you to do it if you think that what we've talked about so far has been helpful.
Okay, so let's talk about this tool and this service that I recommend and that I love. And guys, I have used various ones of these. I've researched various ones of these and I determined that I like this one because it gives me a bunch of options that some of the other ones are missing, okay? And again, this is not a sponsored video. It should be, by the way, but it is not sponsored. Um, I am absolutely an affiliate of theirs because I love recommending services that I've used and utilized, but I really do like them because they really do kind of give you all of the good stuff. Like none of these types of services are perfect, right? None of them are perfect. But this is one that I really love and that I think you can really get some good insight out of. And this is Alliance Virtual Offices. Now, a virtual office from Alliance gives you a combination of on-demand space and address services for the remote worker. It provides professional offices, co-working spaces, and meeting rooms in over 40 countries worldwide and tons of cities throughout the United States. I think that they are actually in all 50 states and they're not just in major cities. I mean, as I was doing my research, that's one of the things that I was looking for to recommend to you guys is a service that has some off the beaten path types of locations so that you too, if you are off the beaten path and don't live in a major city, could have access to some virtual offices. So that is a part of the reason why I love this service. Service. And Alliance Virtual Offices is like Regis and is like DaVinci, all right? But they are not branded as that type of office. I looked into Regis and actually loved Regis for a long time, but one of the things that I realized was that if you rent space from a Regis office or a DaVinci or Regis type office, then that office literally says like Regis on it. And that's always an indication to clients and customers that you have kind of a virtual office thing going on. And so I didn't really like that. I mean, that may not be a big deal for you and I totally get it, I'm not judging you, but for me, I didn't really want my clients that were that I would be traveling to see because, again, I do have a brick and mortar office space for myself where my studio is and my office and my team who um, are on site work. But I travel. And so I really wanted to make sure that I was a member of a service that would give me access to being able to use offices all over the world. So that was a very big deal for me. And um, I love the fact that Alliance actually is in um, various types of office spaces and they have physical office locations, but they're not necessarily branded as, by the way, this is a virtual office and this is kind of a, a remote worker situation. Um, also, they've got various packages that you can use. Um, I don't use everything that they offer though. Like they do offer like some phone stuff and different stuff like that. I use different services for phone. As you guys know, if you didn't see last week's video, I'm going to go ahead and link to phone service video right here so that you could take a look at it because I do give you my latest recommendation on what your business VoIP phone system should be. So make sure that you check that out. And um, I, I don't use everything, but they do have some good stuff, some cool stuff um, that you can actually add on to the different packages, like you know, live receptionist type of stuff. And then you can obviously grow into your business needs with an Alliance virtual office. Because if you're just like remote right now and working, as you add to your team, if you do have any team members that will be on site like I do, you can then upgrade and actually rent an office space. Um, and they also have one, something that's very unique than the Regis and the Da Vinci's, which is co-working space. And I love co-working spaces as well because they're kind of like office uh, office spaces and working opportunities that turn into networking opportunities. I've used co-working spaces if I'm working in different cities before, and I've met some really awesome entrepreneurs and business owners. And so they're great networking for co-working spaces that are also included in this particular service too. Um, another thing about them is that they're very easy to grow into. Like I said, as your business grows and as your business needs change, you can actually get a real true office space that allows you to kind of be in them and they're not crazy expensive like my $60,000 a year lease. And it gives you a virtual office with a physical office presence that meets all of your business registration, your business credit, and your professional business image needs. So Alliance Virtual Offices is an amazing, amazing, amazing resource and tool. And the link to check out Alliance is obviously down below in the description. So make sure that you check it out. It's down there. All you gotta do is click that link 
They have different offers and specials. Um, I think that you also get a free trial with my link. I'm not sure if that's still active, but you can go ahead and check that out. Um, and it will take you right out to their website and you can take a look around, plug in your zip code really quick, and it'll tell you all of the virtual office spaces as well as kind of what the pricing looks like right there as soon as you log in. So it is easy, easy peasy to navigate. So again, my loves, I know how confusing all this setup stuff really could be. So make sure that you comment startup or click the link below and I will send you the training on the step-by-step -step in order way for you to officially set up your business structure. I'm doing it. I'm giving it to you. I've heard your cries. I'm making it available and I want to make sure that you take advantage of it and stay tuned my love because we are just getting started. Like I said, for the next few weeks, we will be focused on all things business setup. Business structure, 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 structure is going to be the name of the game for the next few weeks. So make sure that you subscribe, that you hit that notification bell, that you give me a like or a share, and that you come back next week. Until next time, my loves, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.